Chapter 30. We had made one terrible mistake. When we thought we could make it to the other side of the lake, we forgot that there might still be other mega monsters around, ones that hadn't eaten the sardines. These mega monsters wouldn't have grown to the size that the other ones had. They would be lurking in the water or in the forest. They could be anywhere. And that's what happened. Suddenly, right in front of the canoe, a mega monster exploded from the surface. It looked just like the one we had seen in the swamp, covered with seaweed with huge red eyes and long, sharp claws. It was hideous. I screamed, then Leah screamed, then Sandy. Even Mr. Williams let out a shout. I tried to turn the canoe, but it was too late. The mega monster reached out with his powerful, slimy arms and grabbed the boat. Let go! I screamed, swinging the paddle at the beast. I bopped him on the head a couple of times, but the creature didn't even feel it. I screamed at him again. Let us go, you slimy warthog! I must have made him mad. The creature let out a blood-curling screech and twisted the boat sideways. The four of us plunged into the water. It was ice cold and it took my breath away. The, we immediately began to swim away from the beast. Sandy, I spattered, splashing the surface. Sandy, you have to try. You have to. We don't have any other chance. I knew, she knew what I meant. Sandy stopped swimming and shouted, Mr. Williams, grab my hand. Leah, grab my other hand. Mr. Williams looked puzzled. What are you going to- Never mind now, Sandy said, splashing in the water. Just grab my hand. Rick, grab Leah's hand. Everybody hang on tight. The mega monster was only a few feet away. Hurry, Sandy, Leah pleaded. Hurry. We were all holding hands. Mr. Williams was looking around frantically, wondering what was going on. And with an angry snarl and a vicious swipe of his claw, the mega monster attacked. Suddenly, I could feel us beginning to rise up and out of the water. What on earth? Mr. Williams exclaimed as we were lifted from the surface of the water. You're doing it, Sandy, I cheered. It's working. Below us, the mega monster screamed out, reaching for us. Aga! I screamed. He got me. I kicked with all my might. The mega monster had hold of my shoe with his claw. I kicked and kicked. Finally, my shoe came off and we were free. Below me, the mega monster popped the shoe into his mouth like it was candy. Those Nikes cost my dad 50 bucks. I shouted down at the beast. He's not going to be happy with you. After I said that, I felt a little silly. Oh well, we were safe. And I still had one shoe left anyway. Sandy continued to pull us higher and higher into the air. I held onto Leah's hand as tight as I could as we lifted, as we began to drift towards the shore. I, I can't go much longer, Sandy said. Her voice was shaky, and I could tell that she was having a hard time staying in the air. Just a little bit further, I shouted. The wind whipped at my face. We're almost to the shore. I looked back at the island. The mega monsters that had surrounded the castle were gone. Mr. Williams, I shouted as we drifted through the air. Look! Mr. Williams turned his head. That's good, he said. I'll bet they've reached my laboratory. They've reached my laboratory and have eaten the sardines with the new potion. I'll bet they have shrunk and returned to their normal size. Suddenly, another mega monster appeared in the water below us. It was yet another one that hadn't eaten the first batch of sardines. This one was smaller than the last one, but he was just as ugly and just as mean. I sure was glad we were up in the air. Just then, we began to drift down towards the water. Sandy, I cried, snapping my, hand, my head around. What's happening? I can't go anymore, she said. I'm sorry, but I just can't fly any farther. Oh no, we were almost to shore, and suddenly, we were falling. Sandy's power had faded, and the four of us were tumbling through the air towards the water, and towards the grass, the gaping jaws of a mega monster.